Hello there. This is my first working Jewel Thief. I'm really excited about this circuit because uh, it can do something that I didn't know you could do, and that's you can take a single AA battery and power LEDs with it. As many of you know, LEDs have a forward voltage that is higher than a single battery, and so you need to put batteries in series in order to light up an LED. But with this circuit, you don't need multiple batteries, you just need one. And you don't even need a new battery, and you don't even need a fully charged battery. You can go down pretty low and use low voltages. You can use a low voltage battery, and I would like to demonstrate that right now. This particular battery is um, a fully charged up AA battery. I'm going to replace that with one of the others. So with the D-cell battery, this is uh, the best battery I'm going to show you. You can, uh, I'm just connecting these with neodymium magnets. This is as bright as the LEDs are going to get. But you can light white LEDs. You can light red LEDs. You can light up a single white LED. You can light up two white LEDs. And uh, the most I've tried testing so far is nine white LEDs. And they all light up with a single battery. But that's with a fully charged D-cell alkaline battery. What about one of these other batteries? Here is a AA battery. It's rechargeable. It's it's a battery that I salvaged out of a spiky robot. These are the batteries that came with the robot. I disassembled the battery pack because it wasn't working anymore, but uh, this particular cell is a good one. So we're getting uh, a voltage on this battery of over 1.2 volts, and it can light up. light these LEDs up no problem so that that to me alone is a impressive that uh, that you can light up many LEDs with a single cell but now it even gets more impressive than that here is a dead battery I put dead in quotes because it still does have some charge in it but it's the voltage is too low to be in a normal device to do a normal application and this battery came out of my junk drawer but look at that it's lighting up nine LEDs no problem here's a AAA battery that is also dead and it lights up the LEDs too the voltage of this particular battery is um, about 1.2 volts, but uh, when this battery is brand new, it was about 1.5 volts. So it's too low now to be in a normal application. So this battery is at about 1.2 volts, and it's having no problem lighting up nine LEDs. But it gets even more impressive than that. Here is a dead button cell battery. Look at this, this button cell battery is at 0.6 volts. It's tiny, it's uh, dead, it came out of my scrap collection, and it's lighting up nine LEDs, which I just think is amazing. Got two more batteries left, here's another button cell. It's a thinner one. This tiny, thin button cell battery is lighting up nine LEDs. And just for fun, I would thought I would give this little battery a try. It's kind of a 
an odd looking battery. It's it's actually three cells in series with a piece of plastic around them. These are used batteries. They are not fully charged, but they're small. And I think they look kind of cool. That is really bright out of a tiny battery pack. The trick to this circuit and how it works is that it has a toroidal inductor, which is like a transformer. This inductor acts like a transformer and it increases the voltage from the battery. It works by using this transistor to oscillate the current going through the inductor until the voltage is high enough that it can escape through the LEDs. <clears throat> so actually this LED is oscillating. It's turning on and off super fast, so fast that we can't perceive it turning off. But it is going off and on many times. The real magic is that it uses a magnetic field in this inductor to increase the voltage. I can show that it's in a magnetic field working here by taking one of these neodymium magnets and placing it over the inductor. And when I do so, the circuit stops working. I take the magnet off and the voltage begins to increase again. So with the magnet in my hand, I can disrupt that magnetic field. The voltage can no longer increase through there and the LEDs turn off. If I take the magnet just a tiny bit away from the field, it works a little bit, and the farther I take that magnet away, the better it works. The closer I get with the magnet, the worse that the circuit works. In fact, you can just turn it off with a magnet, which I think is kind of weird. It's weird how magnetic fields work. They're invisible and kind of hard to wrap your head around sometimes. But that's my first working Jewel Thief circuit. I've really been having fun with this and it's cost me nothing because I used scrap parts. So it was, it was fun and I've learned a lot. I guess the next step with this circuit is to take it off the breadboard and make it a permanent one. Thanks for watching.